Before we wrap up our study of solving trigonometric equations, let's go ahead and throw some identities back at you guys. Um, really, all this is going to do is add one extra step to our problems that we've been doing all week long. So um, if you need help uh, with some of the, uh, the final steps of these problems that I'm going to go through pretty quickly, uh, I go back and watch an earlier video because really it's all the same steps with this one new uh, use your identity step added at the beginning. And so here's uh, my first equation. Now it definitely looks intimidating and the big difference uh, of, between this and what we've done earlier is that these have sines and cosines in them. And so when you see sines and cosines mixed together, there's probably a good chance that you can use an identity to get them all uh, the same. And so right away what I notice is one side of my equation is set to sine squared plus cosine squared, which hopefully you recall from when we studied identities, sine squared plus cosine squared is really just a one. And so that's really all the new step that we, the, the new steps that we have for these problems. Uh, recognize where an identity is and then use it to simplify your equation down. Uh, and so once I do that, uh, it's just a matter of solving this and it's really no different than anything else we've done all week long. So dividing both sides by negative two, I get sine of theta is equal to negative one half. Uh, and then from here, let's just go ahead and look at our, our trig chart, um, the same thing we've done all along. Looking underneath the sine column for a ratio of one half, I see that I get uh, pi over six as an angle that would do that. Pi over six may or may not be the answer. It's really just a reference angle. Oops, a reference angle. Uh, so what I want to do is figure out, okay, well, what two quadrants is sine negative in, since I have a negative sine ratio. And there are two quadrants where sine is negative. Sine is negative in quadrant three. And so there's a reference angle of pi over six right there. And then sine is also negative in quadrant four. So there's a reference angle of pi over six. And so then finding your two actual answers, you need to measure from the positive x-axis counterclockwise around the circle. And so there's going to be an answer, and there's going to be an answer. And doing some subtractions or additions or looking at your plates or whatever you need to do to answer this part, uh, which hopefully is fine by this point, uh, 7 pi over 6 is going to be one solution to this equation. And then 11 pi over 6 is going to be a second solution. Uh, as long, and remember, there's probably an infinite number of solutions, but we're only looking at this interval, uh, only solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi, and so there's the only two solutions that would fit in that interval.